Hey guys, Yulia here. So today's video will be part Q&A, part garden updates and part public service announcement. Uh, before I start, I just wanted to say that I get a lot of comments and questions in the YouTube comment section and Instagram DMs as well as Facebook messages and emails. So I spend about an hour a day answering uh, questions and uh, commenting. So it takes me quite a while and if I don't get to your question, don't take it personally. It's uh, just probably because I ran out of time. But uh, please continue commenting, uh, continue um, asking me those questions because a lot of them repeat and I will incorporate uh, videos in this format so I can answer those common questions that you guys ask. Now, um, this video is probably going to be really long <laughs> today, so uh, I don't want to waste any of your time and I will pay uh, post timestamps in the description down below so you can go ahead and skip to the topic that you're interested in. So the first question I got asked quite often in the last uh, month or so because a lot of my videos start in front of this beautiful ivy wall and a lot of you guys just absolutely love it but some of you asked a very legitimate question whether I should be having this wall in my garden and whether it's invasive. So um, yes, it is invasive. No, you should not be planting ivy in your garden. And uh, this was one of the first things that I planted in our garden. And this is about 15 years old. And it took quite a while for this ivy to grow up this wall. And um, any vines, whether foreign or domestic, um, are problematic plants. They can grow really fast, they can damage surfaces, they are hard to control, but on the other hand, they look really pretty, they're romantic, they soften the hard surfaces, they actually provide a lot of shelter for wildlife, but if I were to plant a vine on this garage wall again it would probably be something native like a Virginia creeper which also is an aggressive vine which also can damage surfaces the only difference that it is native so um, definitely be careful with ivy especially if you live on the edge of the woods it can escape cultivation and strangle a lot of trees however I still think it's perfectly acceptable to plant an ivy in containers or window boxes or have it as a house plant. As for the public service announcement, I'm just going to give you a little bit of a background. So we have this beautiful Japanese maple in our backyard and last fall I noticed that it had these weird patches all along the bark and I had no idea what it was so I took a couple of photographs and I posted it to a few of the plant groups online nobody knew what it was either so i kind of let it go but i did my research over the winter and it kept coming up as spotted lanternfly and if you don't know what a spotted lanternfly is you should probably google it it is um very dangerous invasive insect that destroys trees and shrubs and just devastates agricultural shrubs and trees and ornamentals as well so I had an arborist here uh, a couple of weeks ago to check on other trees and I had him look at it. He wasn't sure whether it was a uh, lantern fly either. So he took a couple of photos and he sent it to the township. And five minutes later, he got a text back from our local arborist and he was hyperventilating saying oh my god it's spotted lanternfly it's spotted lanternfly it made it all the way to northern jersey so so far up to this point they've only seen it in pennsylvania area and south uh, jersey but now it is here and they said they will come in, they will spray all of these patches, which are the eggs of spotted lanternfly before they hatch. And each of these patches contains anywhere from 30 to 50 eggs, which will hatch. And these 
bugs will just devastate this tree and actually any tree in my yard and our neighborhood. So they actually came in and they sprayed this tree a couple of days ago. It's all good. But the public service announcement is if you see any patches that look like this, if you see any little black bugs running around on your tree or your shrubs, definitely tell um, your local arborist or your township they will come in they will check it they will spray it free of charge um, and i was really concerned because i've never seen anything like this and um, he said you know a lot of people don't pay attention to the health of their tree unless it is starting to decline so definitely uh, check out your trees make sure their health is okay make sure the leaves are okay the bark is okay and if you see anything like this please 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 report it as for the garden update i just wanted to show you this composition of the uh, more mixed tulips and how beautiful they are now what i wanted to show you specifically is that those little baby tulips right there because those are from last year i left the bulbs and i fertilized them with bone meal and they produced little baby tulips how cute is that and um look at the queen of night those are also babies right here so if you leave your tulips, if you fertilize them with bone meal, they will gift you with more tulips. Unfortunately, there is more bad tree news. Uh, we recently lost our beautiful American holly that's been here for a long, long time, way before we moved into this house. So it started declining this spring um, there were a lot of yellow leaves the leaves had really weird patches on it and i thought it was some sort of a fungal disease that we can spray for that's one of the reasons i had an arborist here to look at the tree and it was just time to let it go it was almost completely defoliated and it's one thing when the deciduous tree gets defoliated <laughs> and looks bad and it's totally different when an evergreen tree gets defoliated it just looks awful so we decided to take it down and the tree company came in last week they took it down the stump is gone and i am looking for silver lining and the silver lining i think is the bed that I have here that opened up a lot of possibilities for lots of shrubs and perennial and beautiful things to plant here um, I did ask for the tree company to leave a little um, memory of the holly tree a little piece of the trunk and I did count the rings it was almost 90 years old and, and then I looked up the lifespan of American holly trees it's about 100 years old so it had a good life um, you know there was a possibility that we could have sprayed it but I just didn't want more chemicals uh, in our backyard so we enjoyed it immensely while it was here we actually decided to donate um, some trees um, to our local public park and some of them will be american hollies which we probably will plant ourselves another garden update i just wanted to show you our beautiful kitchen door plantings they are doing really well the double tulips these are surely doubles I mean it's hard to believe that this is a tulip it looks more like a rose everything has been doing so great and I am so happy that I planted those pansies about a month and a half ago we have been enjoying them um, every time we come home you will look at these beautiful faces look at that and we have been eating the lettuce which is starting to bolt already because it's starting to get warm but I just love this and another garden update our azaleas are starting to bloom uh, this one I planted about 15 years ago and I do not remember the cultivar I absolutely adore this color and also look at that climbing hydrangea it's covered with flowers I think it's going to be a great year for the hydrangeas and azaleas continue right here they're yet to open
just so pretty. Now, another common question that I had after planting these tulips here in pots is that what am I going to do with them after they're done blooming? So um, remember guys, this is the first time I'm doing this. So I am right there with you experimenting, but my plan is, uh, is to deadhead the tulips like you would normally do and then take the pots out like this and uh, what I'm going to do next I'm actually going to put these pots behind the garage um, I will continue watering them and fertilizing them until the foliage dries completely and I will just keep them behind the garage until the fall and then I will put them back in the ground in my flower garden to force them again and see how they do. But um, it, this is definitely an experiment so if this fails it's just a lesson that I learn um, in gardening, which is, that's what gardening a lot is about, is learning from uh, mistakes and experiments. So I will definitely update you on that. I am really curious to see how this turns out, but so far I have loved um, planting the tulips this way. Another common question I get is how are my dahlias doing? Uh, because I have not done any dahlia videos this spring, but here they are <laughs> looking all lush and being hardened off for the second time because I hardened them off uh, two weeks ago and they were all ready to go in the ground and then we had hard frost. So we actually had to put all of them back in the house where they stayed for a couple of days and they didn't have enough sunlight. So they started to look a little yellow and now I'm hardening them off for the second time to make sure it is safe for them to go in the ground. Now, most of these dahlias I overwintered from last year from my own garden and some of them I bought. Um, now, there are rows of different cultivars. I arranged them alphabetically so I can at least see how many of each cultivar I have. And believe it or not, I already planted 20 dahlias in the ground and there are about 45 to 50 dahlias right here. And I think it's going to be fun and interesting year because the good news is that I have a lot of dahlias and the bad news <laughs> is that I have to plant them all. Another common question I got from the winter sowing video is what is the mulch I am using here? And this is a hardwood mulch and I love this fraction here because it's a small fraction to a large fraction pieces. I like it because it breaks down uh, throughout the season and feeds my soil really well and small seedlings like this really appreciate smaller fraction mulch. Now, let me show you right here my larger fraction mulch um, that I use in my perennial gardens, like in my uh, hosta garden right here. Is This is actually Mike's hosta garden because <laughs> he loves hostas the most. So as you can see, the fraction here is much larger. So it takes a longer to break down. Um, definitely, you do not need to reapply it as often. So if you have a perennial garden that is pretty established with a larger perennials and where you do not want anything to seed, the larger fraction mulch is better choice but if you have a self-seeding garden, um, I would go with a smaller fraction. All right, guys, I am back in my plant room because I wanted to show you these beautiful caladiums that I have here that I started from corms earlier this spring. And I cannot even tell you how happy I am with the result. And I know some people are not big fans of uh, tropicals. I am the biggest fan of tropical plants and I probably will retire in Florida at some point. That's how much I love them. But um, these caladiums make me so, so happy. And the reason why I have them here still indoors is because caladiums are probably one of the last plants you should be putting outside 
outside for the summer um, together with coleus because they cannot take any amount of cold and I think their preferable temperature would be consistently over 60 degrees and the hotter the better and it takes a very long time to start these guys from corms they take their time they need a lot of heat they need a lot of humidity so don't get discouraged if your caladiums do not start just put them on the radiator put them in a very warm location just keep watering them so they don't dry out uh, but I am so overly <laughs> excited uh, about this result. The uh, foliage colors in caladiums is just stunning. And I have a pretty shady garden, so I have to find solutions for my like really shady gardens. Um, so I pick coleus and caladiums, especially in lighter co colors because they can lighten up the uh, shade a lot. So I will keep you updated on how these guys are doing and definitely there will be more videos to come. I also wanted to update you on the soil test result. Uh, I made a video a couple of weeks ago collecting samples of soil from one part of um, our garden because I had my suspicions that there was something wrong. So the test the result is in and the kit that I used was called soil savvy and the reason why I did not recommend it in that video and I did not even mention the name is that I do not feel comfortable recommending anything to you that I do not have experience with but I got the result they actually sent it to me by email and uh, I just wanted to show it to you Okay, so my results came as an email attachment and when I open it, I get this chart. And I like that this chart is very easy to read. This is the target area where you should be with your soil and if you're low or high with certain nutrients. And as you can see, I am low on nitrogen, high on phosphorus, and low on potassium. And this low on nitrogen totally explains why my elephant ears didn't perform well last year. So I definitely will be adding some compost or well-rotted manure to the area because this is pretty low. I was kind of surprised. Um, now, also my pH level, as you can see right here, is 5.95 which means that our soil is pretty acidic which I kind of knew about um, which is fine for my area we have a lot of azaleas and rhododendrons and blueberries that really like soil like this if um, I am planting any roses in that area I should probably do something about this pH um, right here on the second page they just give you a little bit more information about the micronutrients and micronutrients and right here they will give you recommendations as for what kind of uh, fertilizers you should add to your soil. So I can definitely recommend Soil Savvy right now. It is very easy to read. Um, it is a comprehensive and a lot of fun to see. Okay, so we made a full circle. I am back in front of our ivy wall, which is probably not going anywhere anytime soon because if we were to take it down, we probably will have to rebuild the garage. But I am controlling uh, this ivy about twice a year. I cut it to make sure it does not invade my beds or any nearby trees. But um, this is it for today. I hope it wasn't too overwhelming. And I covered a lot of questions questions and gave you some updates on what's going on in the garden and the season is just starting so there are more videos to come and thank you so much guys for watching thank you so much for being here I know uh, this channel just recently hit 15,000 subscribers I thank you every single one of you for being here and watching these videos and commenting and asking questions uh, this is just a wonderful community and so much positivity obviously uh, especially during this time but um, I hope you guys are safe I hope you are gardening again as per usual if you have any questions let me know and I'll see you in the next video thanks